Who deserves to be paid more by Man United? Sir Alex Ferguson or Ahmad? It is, I think, even though he's not the manager anymore, I, th I still think Sir Alex Ferguson has, has oh, deserves to earn more. Fergie than was handsomely paid for the time he was manager, and he's been handsomely paid for 11 years while he's not been the manager. I think you can say, are you all right for the rent now? Manchester United have ended Sir Alex Ferguson's ambassadorial role in a further wave of cuts at Manchester United. Following on from a wave of cuts a few months ago, allowing around 250 staff members to leave the club, now the cuts are extending to the boardroom as well. I'm joined by Stephen Housen. Big story this, but you're not quite as outraged as some people are, are you? I think people are just looking at us not to be angry about, mate, to be honest with you. Um, you've got a, a, a very elderly gentleman with health problems. They've changed his role from executive director to a non-executive director, I believe, is the, the reason behind this, and reduced his ambas ambassadorial duties. Um, I don't see the big issue. Well, just let me get into some of the, the details of this story for anyone who missed it or for anyone who hasn't read the article, and then I'll ask you a few questions and sort of give you my thoughts on it as well. So, so Alex Ferguson uh, was an ambassadorial uh, kind of executive, like you said, a board member, but not in the real voting power sense, in an almost sort of ceremonial sense. So he's uh, on the board, but he isn't on the board in terms of sacking managers and you know deciding what happens. You, you would Manchester assume United. his power, uh, his, his voice carries weight. Yeah, of course, as it always should. Uh, but he was being paid around £2.16 million pounds per year, which is the thing that Ineos have looked at and decided we don't want to be paying that anymore. So for reference, that's more than Kobe Maynard gets paid. Uh, that's more than a handful of the sort of um, you know youngsters and, and up and coming players at United get paid. Um, it is a lot of money. Just obviously the the so it's a lot of money for ten years. It is a lot of money for ten years. But do you know what? And there's a, there's a lot of angles to look at this <clears> from. And we'll get into to obviously what it means for United, the emotional side of things, whether he's worth that money, what he's doing to earn that money in the sort of traditional sense. But just fundamentally, isn't there part of you that thinks? And even if it's not the overwhelming part of it, they just thinks, let him have it. Let him ha like what he's done for Man United and football in general. Let him have two million quid a year. Who cares? Does, do, 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 you know what I mean? There's got to be some part of you that. Yeah, that. On, on 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 one hand, yeah, you've got the has he earned it? Yeah, yeah. And at some point, someone decided to put a contract in front of him that put that number on it. Cool. But like I said, this is a, this is an elderly gentleman that's had fucking brain surgery, Joe. Like. How much pressure do you want to put on him? And maybe you might be like, I'm saying pay him and don't ask him to even turn up for work. Okay, cool. Old Trafford needs a baby wipe. Like, we are beholden to FFP and PSR. And if you're not getting value out of it, then, then you might have to cut it. I believe he was also getting more than that because he also had sponsorships where he, if he actually turned up to do the sponsorship, he got paid, like, cash in hand as well on top of it. That's not bad, is it? Listen... We've, he, we've basically paid him 25 mil since he retired. Yeah. That's not a bad retirement. Do you know what? And usually I'm on, I'm, I'm on the who cares grow up side of things of, of this, like, yeah, fair enough, you know, I need to save a few quid for enough. But there's, there's part of me that, that sort of thinks, like, there's no one on earth that, uh, that deserves two million quid a year from Man United more than him. Like, look at what, you know, Anthony gets paid, which is somewhere around 10 million a year. You look at, I mean, any of the first team, Literally any of them. I mean, Bruno Fernandes yeah, has fine. been here a while. Rashford's but been here for twenty years. I get it. You have to find the new era. No, you have to allow like you have to allow Fergie to fucking retire. Yeah, but if it, uh, this is fair enough, if he wants to step back and all that, but I I almost think as a almost as a as a as a pension. Look at it as a pension for him. I don't think he needs a pension. I know, but you don't need it. All right, but let me roll this right. It. United have just sacked what two hundred and fifty staff. Yeah. Is it not bad taste if they keep Fergie on two mil a year when they've sat that many? You can argue it's equally bad taste to even pay Anthony. That's fine. But, like, we can't have our cake and eat it. We don't have the money. Like, this is a, a, a gentleman that's worth every penny that United have paid him for the service that he's given United. But you have to, at some point, move on. But, I, to me, the moving on period only starts <laughs> sort of post Sir Alex's life. I can't see him... And think about him, and obviously he's not struggling for cash, you know, uh, unless his his horse racing stuff has gone completely haywire. But I, I doubt he's got a, a, you know no money in the bank. But I part part of me just thinks, that for as long as he's alive, this is his club, 
I, 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 but but like, I know that's nothing's not going to that, change that. Giving, I know, I get it, and it, it is sentimental and it's sort of emotional rather than financial. Yeah, and, I, and I think sentiments held us back a little bit in this last ten years. Just, just on that, then. So obviously, there is a line where football clubs stop being sentimental and are businesses and fundamentally they are businesses but as you would say and we, we've said in the past they're more than just a business they're not like shell or you know whatever bp or something there is something emotional about them and is it the stadium is it the staff members is it the players is it the fans you know what is it that makes a football club a football club because you look at ineos they've come in and so far, I mean, I think in terms of football club ownership, they've done a lot of good things and they've probably done things that are sensible, but they've removed a fifth or so of the workforce. They are planning to move to a new stadium. They are, you know, getting rid of salaries and, and sort of staff in the, in the name of Sir Alex Ferguson to a certain degree. You, you leave those things behind. How, at what point do you start interacting with and, and damaging what Manchester United is? Because if it's not the stadium and it's not people like Sir Alex Ferguson and it's not the people who work at the club, wh where is it? When, do you know what I mean? Is there a line that they can encroach on and go, actually, you're messing with the fabric of Manchester United here? Yeah, but or? I don't think they're anywhere near that. Okay. I don't think that, like, you, you, you absolutely could. If you do the things like, I can't remember what the fuck he was called, the, uh, the geezer that took over Cardiff and he's like, we play in red now. Uh, yeah, that, I'll remember his name. Keep talking. Like, you Vincent know, Tan. That's the fella. So, things like that. Uh, I'm going to change and let's move us to Milton Keynes. Like, yeah, those are things that impact. So, Alex Ferguson will probably st still have his seats. Mm. He'll still be on telly at every game. He'll probably still be turning up for different things at home and away and, and this, that, and the other. They'll probably still wheel him out for sponsorships and probably, you know, box him off quarter of a million any time he does something along those lines. But you can't ask for root and branch evaluation of every single thing that the club is doing. And when they actually go through the root and branch evaluation of every single thing the club is doing, go, why are we still paying our old manager two mil a year? Hmm. Yes, he's the greatest manager that's ever lived. He left us 10 years ago. Actually, 11. Right? I know he did. I know. I and, know, I know. and he's yeah. been handsomely, like, since 2010, he was on 250 grand a week. Mm. So for at least three years, he was on 250 grand a week. And I'm sure he's had all sorts of, wasn't it 100 grand a day for him to do, like, Harvard business stuff? Mm. Like, and he's got horse races and, uh, uh, like, race horses and stuff like that. Like, Fergie doesn't need the money, but actually the club might. Mm. How much does two and a half million go in terms of the staff that we've let go? Could they have all kept their job if we hadn't have done yeah, this? Yeah, but maybe. But we have done this, and they've still lost the job. I don't. I, I don't think. What if two million quid pays for running the the women's team better and properly? I get it. I do get that there are probably great ways to spend that two million quid that push Manchester United forward as a as a business. And there you even, go. That's even, the cold black but, and white but, decision. But I don't. I don't think it's. For me, the time it would take to sort out all the other wastes of two million quid at Manchester United that include players inflated salaries, players who shouldn't even be here salaries, the sort of money that we've spent on loan fees and this, that and the other over the last sort of decade. I think by the time you've got rid of all of that, Fergie's probably earned another 10 million. And I, I would be quite happy with that. I, and I know obviously it's an easy thing to do and who, who'd have thought this chat in London that everyone thought it was going to end with Ten Hag losing his job has ended up with Sir Alex losing his job. But... I don't necessarily think that those two things are linked. I don't think these 200 people that have lost their job and Fergie's two million are linked. I mean, clearly they're not because they're both gone. So it's not like we well, it's one or the other. Well, the club clearly has to save money somewhere. It thinks it has to. <laughs> if they're trying to raise a billion to build a new stadium, if they're trying to raise funds to do whatever, what if we wasn't able to sign someone? Because like you said, if he's earning more than Kobe Mainu, mm. you can't justify that. He's earning more than Ahmad, and I can actually justify that. And it's not because I don't think Ahmad's a good player, but if, if you said to me, who deserves to be paid more by Man United, Sir Alex Ferguson or Ahmad? Uh, it is, I think even though he's not the manager anymore, I, th I still think Alex Ferguson is, is, oh, deserves to earn more. Fergie was handsomely paid for the time he was manager and he's been handsomely paid for 11 years while he's not been the manager. I think you can say, are you all right for the rent now? Yeah. Now, if I, I think, I saw Gaza talking about, um, he says if, if Rangers ever play Spurs, he'll be supporting Rangers because you know he, he asked for a ticket for Spurs and they tell him it's 400 quid. I'm assuming that's exact. Um, or it's Spurs, it might not be. 
I wouldn't expect Sir Alex Ferguson to ever have to even think about putting his hand in for anything. I think if he wants to do anything, I think if he was like, listen, I'm just going to go Old Trafford today and um, I want dinner. I, mm. I would expect it to be dealt with. I would expect any time he goes to a match that the club pays for a driver for him. Like, I, I, I would hope all of those things happen, but we don't need him on the salary anymore. Yeah. Unless... He wants to come and fucking do a shift in the dugout, and I'd be all right with that. I won't mind that. I was just, we've got a list of, of other clubs sort of cutting ties with legends, and I want to go through it, but I've got a, a point to make at the Not end of it. Not cut ties with him? No, but all right, cut financial. He's still a non executive director. This guy's still yeah. a director. Oh, but he, he, we're still. We're still. We changed when's his the role. Last, when's the last time? We sacked him. Yeah, fucking hell. When's the last time you had two million a year taken off your wage packet? It doesn't happen to everyone, does it? It's been a while. Uh, let me just go through a, a, a list. So Louis van Gaal had a sort of consulting period at Ajax post-retirement, um, and then he left that. Uh, Bayern Munich, Jupp Hein, because he won the treble with Bayern in 2012, and then went, came back again, I think won another league title in t- post-Pep, was it? I'm not sure exactly when that was. Um, he was um, put as, 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 uh, in the back room as well, and then left after, uh, during the pandemic. Um, United, uh, sorry, United aren't alone, because South, uh, Southampton did the same with Letitia, but that was after controversial comments and, you know, sort of mad stuff, which to makes, me is almost makes wor- you think- It's almost worse though, in a way that, because part of me thinks, it's nothing even to do with money. It's just because you were like, oh, it's a bit weird that he thinks aliens are made out of cheese or whatever it is. Um, and then Mark Overmars, again, we can't compare it because this is a different thing. That was a, a harassment case, not nothing to do with you know, a, a cost-cutting exercise. So, but what I would say about all of those people, whether it's Hankers, whether it's, I mean, Leticia, maybe slightly more, whether it's Van Gaal at Ajax, none of them are close to what Sir Alex is to Man United. You, like, I was thinking about this. Without Sir Alex Ferguson at Man United, we could be Leeds now. Like a team that was good in the 50s and 60s. We could be Forest. We could be Wolves. We could be this, like Coventry. This Joe, we paid him while he was the manager. I know we could. And then he what? retired. But, but surely you And then we paid him for 11 but more years. Do you and not? then we stopped paying him. But what about the sort of. The, the, there's like a, to me, there's like a tenure aspect to this. Do you know, like after a certain time, you're just there. You're getting loads of money, and you get it till you die, and that's just what you get for what Do you've know done. What? I know your point. If we'd have been bought by Qatar or the Sheikhs, yeah, keep him on a tip. Sound. No one's got a problem. But when the club's sacking 250 members of staff, I don't think you can justify keeping him. I also don't think you can justify some of the wages that some of the players are on. So don't confuse the subject. But I think when there's 250 people that have lost their jobs that need the money, um, I think that's more important than Sir Alex Ferguson getting paid. Sad though, isn't it? No! It is a bit. How much do you think Fergie's he's get- probably got or earned about 100 mil in his career, That's I imagine. Good, isn't it? How much do you think he's getting paid now then? Because he's still going to be part of the sort of. Half a the- mil, probably. After all these headlines. Yeah, they'll have to give him a little chunk, won't they now? It'd be at least that. Like, if they roll him out twice a year, it'll be half a mil. It'll be fine. He will you, be fine. And do you know what? I bet if you started drilling into what they've got, from Ben Thornley to Sammy Mack to Robbo to Lou Macari, all of these lot, they're not on minimum wage. No. And we have, I mean, all right, we have got so many legends, but we have so many legends kicking about. Do, I mean, Quinton Fortune's in the mix doing that. Jason Park is in the mix doing that. Like, they're out doing stuff for the club the all the fucking like. time. Yeah. I know. I get it. And it is probably the right thing to do, and it's sensible. But to me, it, it just... I don't know, just picks right, it up. Do you a want the fucking club of... running properly or not? Because what you've had under the Glazers <laughs> and fucking Woodward <laughs> is just going fucking payday in a titty bar for anyone who wants it, whether it's players, whether it's yeah. agents, whether it's fucking former managers. And now you have business people in that actually care about the football club and put targets in to win the league and have gone, we need to stop paying people who don't fucking work for us anymore. And you've got a problem with it. Maybe I don't want us to be run properly, lad. Maybe maybe, don't. maybe I don't. Maybe I want people like Sir Alex Ferguson to just get money and help and services that Joey he, will. he no longer deserves. He's but I, Fergie. I, I know. He will. There you go, he is. No, no one else has got... People like... And obviously, I know you disagree, so fair enough. But I see people like, oh, well, you know, Klopp don't get this or they don't get this. Yeah, but no, one, you, no, one, no other club has got a Sir Alex Ferguson. No one has got that. So there is no comparison as to what they should get or he should get or you should get. This is a completely different situation with a human that is completely unique to football. Listen, at the end of the day, we can't afford it. If we're sacking fucking staff, we can't afford it. Okay. So there you go. That's a simple answer. The club clearly can't afford it. And if we, you know, we've, 
we've lost out it's just in recent years from Mary Earps to Casey Stoney to all of those on the women's side of stuff whereas if we'd have had that extra two million could have won fucking Champions Leagues because the women's game like a couple of hundred grand goes a long way yeah. in terms of salaries it let does. alone like you could have another Ahmad or, or Maynou playing for you Speaking of um, players moving on or people moving on Eric Ten Hag was a potential victim of that conversation in London turned out not to be one of the people that was Top of the list to replace him is Thomas Tuchel, now linked with England. What do you make of that in terms of, obviously, him as an England manager, less so, but more so? He was basically the, the bookies' favourite to take over ten, from Ten Hag if he got sacked this season, which is still a very strong possibility. But didn't they speak to him in the summer and we and he decided it wasn't the move? Yeah, but... So why has it changed? Because we're desperate now. <laughs> I mean, well, who, well, who pied who in the summer? Well, the reports that we got as far as discussing the financial package, but then Tuchel wasn't happy with the sort of the role that he would have in the financials at, at United. So it might not be an option anyway. But do you think that United will look at that? Obviously, not necessarily your opinion, but do you think they will look at that and go, "We need to act fast"? Do you think this could be a thing, a play to put pressure on United by Tuchel? Well, if so, who pied who? Did we pay him? Or let's did he say, pay us? let's say, because I've seen more of this again. I don't know if this is true, but I've seen more reports of this, and also it makes the next two or three minutes more exciting. Let's say Tuchel pied us. So we wanted him. We were convinced on Tuchel. We went for him, and the money wasn't quite there or whatever. He pied us. We look weak. Going back in again. Well, we, you look weak that you made a decision that you was keeping Ten Hag, and then two, three months later you decided you're not keeping Ten Hag, and the guy that you you pied for Ten Hag or you didn't think was worth enough money now you have to go back and offer more money you look weak in both senses so where does that leave them in terms of sacking Ten Hag generally then because regardless of who it is they're going to look weak at we did this big mission and then we decided he was the best one and then November rolled around and we got rid correct do you think it's just a no a sort of no win situation for him now yes and no um, I, I think the you could probably gain something if you kept him to the end of the season. I don't know if that would be tenable. Yeah. Um, if we don't pick up wins, he'll, he, he will have to pay with his job. Whether or not you could use Rude as an interim mm. or Rene. Yeah. Could be Rene as a manager. We've all thought it's going to be Rude. It might not be. It might be no. Darren Fletcher. Who, who, knows? who knows? Like if you, you might be able to get away with having an interim because that's gone perfect every time we've done that um, to the end of the season. Mm. I'll get Ralph back 2.0 um, and then appoint someone in the summer but what circumstances have changed with your targets what work have you done on your targets what makes speaking to them for a second time different mm. um, and on, whether he goes England or not, I really couldn't give a fuck just on the England thing people talk about him like he's sort of almost guaranteed success because he's won trophies everywhere he's been if you look, if you compare his CV to Fabio Capello's when he joined England, it's nowhere near as good as Capello's was. Like I know people now, Capello and Capello hadn't worked in England. Though. He hadn't. That's true. He hadn't worked in England. But for people who don't remember, or people who just think of Capello as the, you know, sort of slightly mean bloke who didn't let people see their wives in, on in the World or Cup have ketchup. or have ketchup. He won five Serie A titles as a manager. He won two La Ligas with Real Madrid. He won the Champions League with AC Milan. He won the Super Cup with AC Milan. Uh, and he won uh, the Super Cup with Roma as well. He's an exceptional manager. Like, genuinely fantastic. And obviously, Tuchel's won a uh, couple of league titles with, with um, PSG. He's won it with, with Bayern as well. But he took over in March. I'm not really having that. The, the main big thing on his CV is that Champions League win with Chelsea, isn't it? Do you think he would even be a success at England? I know he's not that bothered, but just as him as a manager. I think one of the reasons that Capello didn't work, yes, his CV is absolutely fantastic. I think international football is a lot more about personality. Mm. Um, you've just got to have the lads f fired up and feeling good for four weeks at a time. Yeah, That's the truth. Yeah, And Capello was the opposite of that. And I think with what was the British culture in 2010 especially and the British player culture in 2010, I think they were used to a lot more freedom. Mm. Did he come in on the back of Sh Steve? And prior to that, it was like, oh, it was probably a lot longer before that. It was Sven. Yeah. And they got away with murder under them. Yeah. And I think the FA probably deliberately chose someone that was a bit more schoolmastery, and it backfired. Yeah, it did. It was it like you, you think of Southgate, and I know he didn't quite get him over the line, but his big thing is the sort of the mood in the camp, people getting on, will sort of 
camaraderie our way to a final or two. But well, yeah, because he had fucking nothing going on in terms of tactics, did he? P- potentially not. No. But would you be sad then? No, if Tuchel takes the England job. I think Tuchel's a real viable option for United. Yeah. Um, but if he doesn't agree or the club don't agree, then he's not a viable option for United. Um, there's not many people that have got a CV that you would go, hmm, okay. There's not many that excite you. No. There's even you know there, there's not many that you even think well uh, I guess. There's so many people where you just go that's just absolutely not the right fit. And I think there's a lot more of those, a hell of a lot more of those that are probably going to be on a list somewhere with a chance that they could be the next Manchester United manager. Um, it's it's a weird thing managing because you know, like you said, Capello, from a tactical point of view, from an understanding of football point of view, you're looking at a 0.1 percenter. Yeah. But personality matters, and I don't think he spoke English. Mm. And that was like I know he wasn't at the first foreign manager that England had, um, but Sven was. Oh, he was a shagger Sven, wasn't he? So he had a little bit of charm about him and stuff like, yeah. um, and he spoke English. With a, re- a real cool accent there. Yeah, it was a really well, good wasn't? accent. Whereas Capello, he had he had that sort of Tommy Cooper look about him, didn't he? Mm. Uh, and he was very spitting image, unfortunately for him. Yeah, he is um, a bit. He was, wasn't he? He was complete spitting image. Got a touch of the sort of foam face. Yeah. Mm. And he just, like, he just rubbed the lads up the wrong way. And I think for being Manchester United manager, I think from a, a tactical understanding point of view, there's probably hundreds of people who could do it. Mm. But from the the other seven of the eight things that you need to be Manchester United manager, the respect, the media understanding and management is huge for Manchester United. The ability to handle the pressure and understand what that is at Manchester United. The personality. Mm. You know, um, all of those sort of things have to come together. And I think that, I don't know, I don't even know if Ten Hag fits all of those bills. People in the comments have been saying he absolutely doesn't. But but then who does? I don't know the answer to that. You know, and when you think like, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, Ralph, um, to a greater or lesser degree, Oli, none of them could do it. They all had a deficiency in at least one of those areas. Mm. And obviously David Moyes, multiple of those areas he's clearly a good manager I've just seen him win a European trophy with West Ham yeah like there's there's clearly yeah, Louis van Gaal and Jose Reno you can't tell me the bad managers because they're absolutely not you know they've forgotten more than I'll ever know about the game but they couldn't manage Manchester United so like I think it's hard for us to sort of understand the pressure that Eric Ten Hag must be under at the moment and it's it's wrong that it goes on a game by game basis. Oh, safe. Oh, dodge it. Oh, safe. Yeah. Like, but that I I genuinely believe we're in a situation like that where it is going to flip flop between safe and maybe look at right move for a minute. Yeah. And I, and I don't know if you get somebody in temporary to do that. I don't know if they've been doing enough homework. I, I imagine that they're looking at that. But how do you analyse managers? It's the hardest thing to do because it's so dependent on how good the team is around them and that they're they're able to put out on the pitch yeah yeah because I mean obviously Pep is I would say the best manager of generation I think most people would say that but if he'd been managing Coventry Oldham and Freiburg would he have a 75% win rate no but he's still the same bloke still the same manager so it does depend the situation and all that so it's going to be a tough job whoever it is isn't it fun times ahead right thank you very much for joining us hit subscribe to the channel if you haven't already we'll see you in a bit